This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God Read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue unlearning the world with book 2 In chapter 6 this is section 7 Goals Doing and Purpose Hi David I feel compelled to say that if it were if there were no goals then i would never have listened to the voice for god which spoke to me and told me that opening my store was my path i feel i was specifically directed to do this and now that i am here i have to do certain things which are more of the world in order to pay the rent support my family and continue on with what i have started my question is you talk about goals like they are counter to the holy spirit and yet in order to get the messages out there into our brothers hands we including you have to do things and those of us with children and payments have to do things one step has to go before the other in order for things to fall into place it has been my experience over the last year that as long as my goal is truth then as i move forward i do not need to see the next step i just have to take it i could lie in bed all day and do nothing and still survive for a while but how is that helping my brother in the course it talks about setting the goal and if i understand it correctly if your goal is truth then all you need is faith and all will be given you so my sister when she talks about writing children's books as long as her goal is truth shouldn't it work the same way clarity on this would be appreciated beloved one thanks for your loving witness of the answer to prayer and for the deeply sincere question if you read the real alternative section of acim it becomes apparent that all of the roadways of the world were made to lead away from truth and thus christ teaches that all the roadways of the world lead to death happily christ also teaches that there is no death and that the real alternative leads to heights of happiness so every seeming step the holy spirit offers as guidance to help the mind awaken is valuable for every step in purpose has the value of forgiveness yet the context of awakening is that the holy spirit uses the symbols of time to teach that there is no time miracles are temporary devices to collapse time and the atonement is the complete collapse of time in which the mind loses track of time entirely the doer dissolves in watching this is referred to in the manual for teachers of acim when christ says that judgment through you rather than by you occurs the true you refers to the holy spirit goals which are specific are used by the holy spirit along with specific guidance while the mind still believes in process the sleeping mind made up and believes in time and specifics the mind is never hurled into reality 
and though there is some uneasiness with every seeming self-concept shift, there is no destruction of perception or of the status quo. The Holy Spirit's plan is a retranslation of the past to a perspective that might be called a purified past. The purified past is whole, thus not divided into the parts the ego offers in its perspective of the past. The reply to the previous post also dealt with the same topic, as the writer perceived herself as a writer awakening to the Christ Self. These symbols called words, which are twice removed from reality, can be used in purpose to recognize a state of mind that is beyond the words entirely. The Beatitudes, the tranquil state of consistent peace, love, freedom and happiness are the goal of the Course. These attitudes come from accepting the Atonement. The Atonement is complete forgiveness. In the third chapter of the supplemental pamphlet, Psychotherapy, Purpose, Process and Practice, there is a section you may find helpful called the Question of Payment. In the Song of Prayer, Jesus tells us that the truly humble have no goal other than God because the need for idols and defenses is past. And from Workbook Lesson 131, no one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. Failure is all about you while you seek for goals that cannot be achieved. You look for permanence in the impermanent, for love where there is none, for safety in the midst of danger, immortality within the darkness of the dream of death. Who could succeed where contradiction is the setting of his searching and the place to which he comes to find stability? Goals which are meaningless are not attained. There is no way to reach them, for the means by which you strive for them are meaningless as they are. Who can use such senseless means and hope through them to gain in anything. Where can they lead? And what could they achieve that offers any hope of being real? Pursuit of the imagined leads to death because it is the search for nothingness. And while you seek for life, you ask for death. You look for safety and security while in your heart you pray for danger and protection for the little dream you made. Yet searching is inevitable here. For this you came and you will surely do the thing you came for. But the world cannot dictate the goal for which you search unless you give it power to do so. Otherwise, you still are free to choose a goal that lies beyond the world and every worldly thought, and one which comes to you from an idea relinquished, yet remembered, old, yet new, an echo of a heritage forgot, yet holding everything you really want. Be glad that search you must. Be glad as well to learn you search for heaven and must find the goal you really want. 
No one can fail to want this goal and reach it in the end. God's Son cannot seek vainly, though he try to force delay, deceive himself and think that it is hell he seeks. When he is wrong, he finds correction. When he wanders off, he is led back to his appointed task. Workbook Lesson 131 Paras 1 through 4